Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little corn guy. Um, it's kind of kawaii inspired with the, the food with the smiley faces. Um, it's made all on one loom, so that's good. Um, I guess the bad thing would be that we need a lot of wrapped bands. Um, the other day on Instagram I posted a latch hook and asked who had one and it seemed like quite a few people did, so that's a good thing. Um, you can still use the rainbow loom hook to do this tutorial. You don't have to have the latch hook, but it makes it a lot easier. Um, and what I mean by wrapped bands is we need 40 yellow wrapped bands. And on the latch hook, you just take your band, wrap it over, wrap it over twice, then grab both ends, and wrap it all over again. And when I'm doing these, um, because I know I need to make a lot of them, I just shove it down to the base. And I'll kind of prep a bunch of the wrapped bands until I fill this all the way up to the point. And then once I get a bunch of these on here, I start making the wrapped bands. Just put my band in the hook part and pull this down and now I have a wrap band and that was super easy. You just keep doing that until you have a 40 that are yellow on yellow, so yellow wrapped over a yellow band. Then we also need to have two pink wrapped bands, which are the cheeks. And if you're doing it on the rainbow loom hook, it's the same process, but you just probably won't kind of build them up like you could on the latch hook, but band over your hook, wrap it around both sides, wrap it around again, and then take a yellow band and pull it through. And you need to have two of these. And then you also, um, for the eyes, I'm going to use beads that are um, they're seven millimeter pony beads, so they're not quite as big as the normal size pony beads that are out there, which is, oops, which is these ones right here. So they're a little bit smaller um, for that I'm going to use for the eyes. If you don't have any of these beads, then you can certainly just use um, black wrapped band over yellow. And it's the same thing, just wrap it around four times over a yellow band. So. 40 of these, two of these, and one of these, um, then that will be, in total we probably use around 100 yellow bands, and then um, three black bands if you use bands for the eyes, two pink bands, and for the stock, the husk and the stock here, then that's probably, I want to say it was around 100 and. 30 bands, 140 bands, something like that for all of this. Um, you don't have to do the variegated colors. I did like a light green and a regular green. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. That's up to you. Um, you can just use one color green. And then a couple of white bands to use for corn silk. So what you're going to want to do first is pause the video here and make all of your wrapped bands because we do need them right away when we start looming. And when we come back, we'll actually start with making the husk for the corn guy. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and make those, that would be fantastic. Um, definitely, if you don't have one of these, um, probably get a hold of one, because they are very helpful in doing wrapped bands. And they're, um, I got this at Joann's for like less than $4. If you have a coupon, then you can get it for even less. So... Wrap bands, and then come back, we'll make the leaves. Alright, so we need to make the leaves, or the husk here on the side of our little guy. And regular loom setup. And I'm going to use two different colors of green again. Although you can use whatever colors you like. And we're going to start by um, going up the side it's kind of like going up six and then coming in at a big angle to the seventh in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, and then seven goes way up into the middle. And do the same exact thing on the other side. like that, and then come back to the beginning, and we're going to kind of make little arrows down the loom here in the center, so just outside in or across, I like this. So we'll make one here, and then we'll just keep doing that up until we get to the point up here. I want to say that I think what I'm making is actually a bracelet. It's not quite a zippy chain, but um, maybe the bow tie bracelet, something like that. Um, just in case anybody notices the similarities, that was not my intention or when I looked for, or I didn't look for um, making a leaf, but this is just what it turned out like when I started doing it. I was just trying to fill some spaces in. So, little arrows all the way up, and then come back to the beginning, and we're going to go up the center of our stripe here, or center of our husk. And we'll start way back, back here in the beginning, and just go right up the center. And then on this end one, we'll put an end cap. Four times around, three or four times around. Want it fairly tight. So once you have that, then we'll turn it around and loom it. And you'll go in through your end cap. And we're just going to loom up that single chain that we just put on. So this all the way up. Make sure they stay on the pins, because we're going to loom out the arrows out of them. Like so. And then we'll loom out of each of the, the single chain pieces here, we're going to loom out our side pieces. Just go in there and grab them and loom them back towards himself all the way up. Like so. Now I want to point out that um, when we take this off the loom after we've loomed up the sides here, um, this band isn't really um, necessary until we actually attach it to um, the corn guy or the corn cob in the middle. So I kind of just wanted to leave this on here so you could see where it's going. Just loops right through that end of the chain, but we aren't going to really pay attention to it a whole lot as we like I might take it off or it falls off or whatever, we don't worry about it, we just want to keep these two points secure. So, back to the beginning, and loom up these sides through your end cap all the way up. And up the other side. So now we need to, of course, get this off the loom so that we can make another one because we need three. So what I'm going to do is take another band, I'm going to pull it through the end over here. I'm just going to kind of leave it 
tucked up against the pin, so it's not really, I haven't tied, done any slip knot or anything, in it, but it's just secure there. Do the same thing on the other side. Like that. And now, like I said, we're not really going to pay attention to this one a whole lot, because it, we don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to stick my hook in here, take it off, and I'm just going to go over to this other corner and take this one off. So this one, you can actually just take it off, and when we loom the other two, um, I won't worry about putting that on there, but I just wanted you to see where it went in that little spot, because we will use it later. So remove this, but as you're coming back, if you can see right here, there's two pins. We're going to put this on here. So it's out of the way of the leaves that we still have to make, but it's not going to be in the way when we start making our corn guy on this end of the loom over here. So like that. So we need to make two more of these um, the same way. So up the side seven that seventh one comes in kind of weird I'm just gonna make this one um, leaving off that first chain and then um, I will fast forward through making the third one pretty quickly so that video is it longer than it already will be so uh, once you've gone up both sides the seven then come back and do our arrows again like so. So now when we start this time, instead of starting right here at the beginning, we'll just start a band up. So right where they meet the arrows. And end cap. Turn around, in through the end cap, loom up the single chain, like so. Then loom out our cross pieces, our arrows, I guess I'm calling them. and up the sides. So whatever one's on top. Like so. And again, you can't actually Pull them up this way. Secure the ends. This also helps reduce the bulk that we have there when we attach it to the corn guy, so that's why we are also putting those bands through. But remove this one, then you just put it right across from the other one. like so. Alright, so I'm going to make my third one. Um, like I said, I'm going to fast forward through it, so if you need to pause so you can catch up, that would be good. 
in a moment I will be back and we'll start making the corn guy. All right, so I'm done with the last leaf, not leaf, last, last husk. And we can actually just leave this on the loom because it's not gonna be in our way with what we're going to do next. So now, working down here with the six pins, we are going to start using some of those wrapped bands that, um, well, almost, I should say, um, pretty soon. First, um, we need to do the top layer for his head and it does involve wrapped bands but there's really no point in doing them beforehand because of how this guy is created um, we have to put them on after they're on the loom because it's a lot easier so we're going to make a little starburst from the center right here let's put the bands out in a star pattern Like so. End cap. You want it pretty tight. Three or four. Depends on your bands. So we're going to loom this out. In through the end cap. And loom out all the bands in there. Top band first and then the next one down. So, and now we need wrap bands on these. Um, I did do it beforehand because otherwise you'd have to try and tug all the, because the bands would end up being on the bottom and you have to try and tug them through the end cap and that is a pain. So I'll do majority of them on my latch hook and then I'll do one on the regular hook. So I hope that I'm because I'm using the latch hook, it doesn't deter people from doing this tutorial because it's certainly you're able to do it with just the regular hook, but it's just a little bit easier. Um, I'm just going to grab the top band from the starburst layer. I figure that we can have most of the corn kernel on the top that way instead of some of it hiding below. So let's go around top band and slide those wrap bands over it. And then if you have the rainbow loom hook, let's wrap it around once and then both around twice. Grab that top band and slide it down. And replace. Like that. And now since it'd be a little bit easier to do it now, we're going to add some of the silk if you want that on your little guy. And I just usually grab, if I poke it through one band of the wrapped or the end cap, take it through one band, put my corn silk band on, pull it through, and just make a slip knot. And you want to add a few of them. Got wrap brand, wrap bands on the brain. I wanted to wrap that for a second.
something pointy with no hook, or something with a lot of hook that's not pointy enough. But just add those in, um, as many as you want. I'm going to add one more over here. And like I said, you can always add them in after, too. But normally, although I, of course, couldn't get that one on very well, it's usually easier to do it now. And you can cut them all later if you want, or you can just leave them with their loops on still. But I'm just going to tuck those out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. So once we have that, now we're going to start using all those wrapped bands that we made. Those are not these ones. So first we need six yellow wrapped bands and we're just going to lay them around in a circle. There's a lot of prep work for this guy, but I think that um, most of it's pretty easy. Making of the husk is not too hard. Um, the wrap bands, though tedious, aren't that hard on the looming. Um, the hardest part will be when we attach the two together, but hopefully I'll try to make it as easy as possible. So now I have those six wrap bands around. So now you're going to take your loom, if you want to turn it sideways. So you can see we're going to flip the bottom two bands over the top two bands. And just the bottom two. All the way around. So then there's just two bands left on all the pins. So then push those down. And we're going to do that again six yellow wrapped bands all the way around. Like that. Then once again we're going to flip over the bands on the side, bottom two bands only, all the way around. Like that. And you can push this down again. And now we're going to do four yellow wrapped bands and the two eye bands. Um, if you want to, you can stick your hook in here and you can pull up on the end cap. Obviously be careful because you don't want to pull it off the loom. But our little corn guy is starting to grow, so you can see it's getting a little bit bigger. Alright, so now, eye band, if you have the bead or if you have a wrapped band, it's going to go right here on the front side and the other one right next to it. and then the other four yellow wrap bands will go around the rest of it. These are annoying me. Well, they're not really annoying me, but I worry they're in the way for you. So. As long as it sticks straight up, we're good. There, that's a little better. And the last yellow wrapped band all the way around. So the two eye bands are in the front and then yellow wrapped bands around. 
And again, we're going to go around the side and flip over the bottom two bands all the way around. I think the only pin I find really a pain is this one, but the other ones aren't so bad. So there's still just two bands left on the pin. Push it down again. And this row is going to be six yellow wrapped bands and the two pink wrapped bands. Um, first you're just going to go around with the six yellow bands. like so. And then the two pink wrap bands are going to go right where we had the eye beads, right here in the front. I'm just going to put them right on top. You want to try to make sure these aren't super twisted bands or that they look good because it does show up how well they are twisted on the little guy's cheeks. So, the back three pins are just going to have two bands that need to be flipped over. So flip over the bottom two on these back pins. Like so. And then on the front here, this pin and this pin, there are going to be three bands that we want to flip over. So first you can just flip over the bottom two, and then the very bottom of that third group, or this group right here. And you do the same thing on the other side, bottom two, and then the next bottom one. In front, best angle here, there are the um, two bands from the cheek bands that are right on top. Those are going to stay on the pin and the rest of them are going to go over. Like that. So now every pin has two bands on it once again. And now if you make sure your things are pushed down here. You can pull up on the center again kind of get a little idea what he's looking like. Don't judge him until he's done. So now mouth, black band or whatever color you want for the mouth, wrap it around your hook one time and you're going to lift up this first couple bands that are right in front between the cheeks. Lift it up, slide that black band off or mouth band onto the band and then replace back on the pin. And that makes our little mouth like so. Next row, or next three rows actually, are just going to be six bands wrapped around. So, six yellow bands wrapped around. And it gets to be a little bit of a pain with this guy kind of being in your way. Um, it's not quite as too bad yet, but it will get bad when we do the husks. So um, just keep pushing them or pulling them out however you need to. 
Uh, flip over the bottom too. All the way around. So you just have two bands left on the pin. You can see them starting to look cute. All right, two more layers of the wrapped bands. I think there's something wrong with my cat. She's kind of weird. She'll like come down to my craft room and she like just licks things. And now she's playing with a piece of cardboard that's stacked up against the wall. So that's what that lovely noise is. She's just being weird. Alright, so there's that next row. Lift over the bottom ones. And one more row of these six. So six bands around again. And now, again, flip over the bottom two all the way around. Like so, so there should be only be two bands left on the pin. And you can definitely see the little guy. Cute! Now, here comes the part that I think is probably the hardest. And that is, we need to get the leaves onto the side of the pins here. Um, we use three pins for each leaf, so they kind of overlap around. And this little guy is going to be in the way. Hopefully we can keep him out. But here's the only thing that's kind of um, makes it tricky, I guess. Or why I think it's more of a pain. Normally when you go to attach something, you're just going to kind of come at it straight and it hangs off the outside. Um, we actually need this to be bunched up in the middle for a little while. So instead of just coming in and put it on the pins, it actually needs to kind of go on backwards. So I think the easiest way to do that is to just kind of approach it backwards. So if I need to put on the ones on these three pins right here, I'm just going to come in from this side come up this way. So we have the two bands on the hook from each, or a band from each side. So this band is going to go on this back pin and the other one is going to go on the front pin in the middle here. And I'll show you better once I get them on. So you see how that's kind of smushed in the way. So we want it like that. And here's where that band that I was talking about from before, where I wanted you to see where it went, um, it's, we need to put that on. So I have tried just leaving this over, or pulling this over and looming it, but it kind of bunches it up funny. So one band. I usually just stick it on the pin. 
So we need to pull it through that spot. You put on the pin, put your hook through that little loop right there, pull it through, and then loop it. So now this husk is attached. And try to center it well um, because it isn't very forgiving as far as moving later. Um, so otherwise you're just stretching the bands. So kind of center up this way. So the other two, same process. Get them on the hook. And this one will go on one end on this pin, the other end on this pin, and then we'll put that middle one on. And like I said, I think this is the worst part just because it's you got the corn guy in the way and you don't want your bands to fall off the pins. So just keep your fingers on them and squish them down if you need to. We will secure them very shortly. But it's just right now you have to be careful. So again, that middle pin Stick the band on there, in through the bottom one, and just loop it over. Stick it down, like that. And then the last one, it's still up here on my loom. Of course I want to pull the band through first. Last one, move the guy back, get it around the pin, and I'll give you a better view of the sides when we're all done here. that and that center band loops too far like that so this is what these sides look like there's two bands on one pin four bands two bands oops four bands Make sure those are all pushed down, and you, you'll start to see kind of hear what I mean by there just is a lot in the way. So that's my deterrent right now, and hopefully you'll be able to see through everything. But we're almost done, so that's the good thing. Um, now I'm going to take a band, just one, and we're going to lay a layer of bands all the way around the pins. It's tight. It's kind of annoying. You got to push this thing out of push everything out of the way to get your pins on. But you can start anywhere, but just one band all the way around. So push the guy out of the way if you need to. So once you have the single band all the way around the six pins, which is hard to see because my guy is in the way now, we are going to go in, and this gets a little tricky I guess, um, we're first going to go in through our bands that we have already on the pin. So we're going to go under, let's see, explain this better, we'll start over. 
Um, we want to go in through the bands that we have the, on the pin already from the husk underneath the two bands that cross right here. So go in through the leaf bands and we're leaving those top two bands alone. We're going to grab our corn band and bring it up over the pin. And we could do that for all of them. On this one it's only two ba bands we're going through. And then we'll come back and take care of the other bands. But we just want to get this secure. So it's in through. I think I need my in through the bands for the husk. Grab that corn band and pull that up and over the two green bands we just put on. And you'll do that all the way around. The worst one, of course, is the back one. There's luckily only two bands there, so it's not so bad. So like so, so you should have no more corn bands underneath. So now what we're going to do is We're going to flip over a few more of these bands just so that they are out of the way. And we'll just flip over the bottom two and we'll leave the four. So just on the band or the pins that have the um, extra bands, just flip over the bottom two. So now there are four bands on the pin all the way around. So what we're going to do, push them down. And now we're going to take two bands and go all the way around the six pins. So just lay those right on top. This makes for a nice firm stalk on your corn guy. And again, just push the corn out of the way. one here. Like so. Then what we're going to do is just flip over the bottom four bands all the way around once you have those on. All the way around, flip them. So now you should have still have four bands on your hook. And you can see it's kind of popping out now, which is what we want. So, another layer of double bands all the way around. We're getting there. So two bands again, all the way around the six pins.
like so. And once again, flip over the bottom four bands over the top. Now that we've gotten there, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and just flip over the bottom two bands, which might be a little hard to see um, or differentiate, especially if you have the same colors. Um, it's not a huge deal if you pop over the wrong ones because we're at the bottom now, but we just need to have less on the pin to stitch up. And like this one I somehow magically flipped over more than I needed to. So we'll just flip over another one. And last two here. Like so. So now there should just be two bands on the pin all the way around. And your little corn guy should be standing up pretty tall. All right, so now all that's left to do is to slip stitch off the bottom. And how we're going to do that is um, you need to be really careful here because there isn't much holding this guy on anymore except for these bands around. So we're going to start in the back away from the face and hold this guy down with your thumb or something. Stick your hook into this back band, pull it off the pin, go in through the next band over, and pull this first band through the second band to make a slip stitch, then do the same thing in the next one. Keep going around and keep holding your guy down and last one and take them off the loom and then we will f you can try find it's kind of all bunched up here so it's a little hard to find but if you can find the first stitch, which is kind of after this big bump right here, find that first stitch, stick your hook underneath of it, grab another band, and pull it through everything on your hook. Back on your hook, both ends, and make a slip knot. Then you can kind of stretch out the bottom a little bit tuck in your tail and you have a little corn guy. He's so cute. Um, you might notice with the face there's a couple things I noticed when I was making this the several times that I made him and made him and didn't finish him because I didn't like how it turned out. Um, in the face you might have the bands that are right below the eyes. They might be tucked behind. So you can either leave them there, tucked behind, or you can pull them back out. It's up to you um, how you like it to look. Um, the mouth, it's just that wrapped band around kind of that pin, so you can adjust that how you need to as well. The eyes might need to pop out a little bit. You kind of have to work with it. Um, it is hollow on the inside and there is still an opening underneath here so 
you have a lovely little pencil topper, which I think we're, it's apparently very popular right now, or you can stuff him. Um, just use some fishtails or whatnot to do that. And let's see, I'll remove my slip knot here. Um, what I did also, because to me the corn usually, their little leaves are up and kind of poke back. So I just took another couple white bands, went in through here on the side somewhere, just picked a spot and grabbed a band. And I picked kind of where the leaf would, or the husk kind of bends over, right around in that area. Just grab like part of the single chain that runs up the middle, not the whole thing, but just part of it. Grab your silk band and pull it through everything on your hook. Try not to get snagged on a bunch of stuff. And then just do a slip knot there. And you can do a couple if they're doesn't work out the way you want it to the first time. Just do some silk right there, ties it up, helps make the sides stay up. And you do it on the back as well. Um, I think they look cute when they're cut. Like hair. So you can do that all the way around. It's kind of, I just think he's adorable. He's got lots of friends. Um, also to the cheeks, you may need to go back in there with a hook and adjust them. Like if you're where you wrapped over the bands, if they're crossed right in the front, you might want to pop those back so that they're more even. Um, it's just the nature of rubber bands that they don't do what you want them to do all the time. And you stick your hook through all of it and kind of spin it around until you get a flat side in the front. But this is my little corn guy. I think I'm going to call this one Cornelius because it just fits, of course. But I'll add my little, the rest of my silk in for myself. And I hope you like this little guy. It's definitely adorable. Um, be neat, I think, to see him in different colors or using some jelly bands in with the yellow. Um, you can have the bicolor sweet corn, which is white and yellow or fall corn would be adorable too, I think. So, thank you for watching, as always. Um, I hope you like these guys. I think, that, I just, I really think they're adorable. But, of course, if you make any of them, I would like to see your pictures. Um, you can put them on my Instagram page, which is, which is at Crafting Fantastic, or on my Facebook page, which is, um, you can search Feeling Spiffy or Crafting Fantastic, and both of them will come to my page. Um, the links for those are under the, the video, too, in the description box. And as always, if you'd subscribe to my channel, that'd be fabulous, too, so you can see when I have more adorableness coming out. Um, I do have some more plans for stuff like this, because I think they're cute. Um, I'm just kind of got a kick on the cute little food, so. But thank you for watching. I definitely appreciate it, and I will have more adorable tutorials for you soon. Thanks.